My speed as a guitar player comes mostly from my left hand, so I want to get this thing going. I want to get my right hand moving. I enlisted Steve Stein, a great educator, great guitar player. Check out his website and his YouTube channel. The links are right below. I asked Steve to help me with some tips on how to play faster with my right hand, alternate picking. I knew it would be good, but he gave me a wealth of information. And, uh, and also we got to do the fancy thing where we have the split screen and he's in one state and I'm in another. So this is a really fun video. Click the link below also if you want to check out the masterclass. Hey, Steve, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Tim? <laughs> I'm good. This is cool, this technology. We get to <laughs> be together. Yeah, that's right. But I'm going to have you out here. You got to come to California soon so we can do this face to face. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, I saw a great video that you did about how you teach alternate picking speed um, improvement techniques. I'd like to get my alternate picking up to a faster speed. And, and I'm willing to sit in front of the TV and practice this. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and that's good because that's really what you have to do. <laughs> and I know that most of the guitar players I see can play way faster than me. So I, I got I to gotta jump on the train here. What I think about when I first started learning how to do this is the first and foremost, which I'm sure, Tim, you don't probably have the same problem, but most people try and go too fast and then everything just winds up sounding really sloppy. The, the big thing is the first of all, finding the right guitar pick. Okay. I'm telling you, it makes the difference. So, you know, I grew up when I was younger, I would use like the Fender mediums and things like that. And what I found was when you really want to start learning how to, this is just my opinion on things, but if you, you want to learn how to pick more articulate and faster, the sharper the point the better Ooh. off you are. So if you've got Ooh. a, yeah. You see this? I See, I use three different picks for three different purposes. I use a super thin nylon one for acoustic strumming. Sounds feathery and you don't really hear the pick because it's soft nylon. And then for like funk rhythm and some rhythm stuff, I'll use like a medium pick. But for soloing, I discovered this Dunlop that has the sharp point. So this is, this meets your approval, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I got so excited when I found out he liked to use a pointy pick also for leads. This is the one. For me, it's a Dunlop. I, I'm not sure which model it is, but it's the extra heavy sharp point purple one. And then for rhythm stuff, here's a Dunlop Ultex 73, like for funk rhythm and rock rhythm. And then for acoustic, this is also a 73 Dunlop, but it's nylon and it's very forgiving. And I like to use this when I strum acoustic. Yeah, I, I was introduced to uh, Jazz 3, which is a Dunlop, and then I moved into these John Petrucci guitar picks, and now I've actually uh, landed on. They're called Hawk picks, and I just love them. But th the point is is that you really need to make sure that that, that, that point is refined so when you go to start okay. picking... I'm going to go to a bit cleaner uh, channel here so you can kind of hear this, but as I play, what I'm trying to focus on... is trying to get as, as minimal movement as possible as I go across that string. And what you gotta think about is whether or not you're gonna be an elbow player or whether or not you're gonna be a wrist player because most people either move from one of those two points when they're picking. Okay. So, you, I mean, in the beginning stages, it isn't really about accuracy and speed and string connection. Those will all come, but the first thing is, is, is making sure you find that pick, give it a try, see what you think. And, and let me let me turn the pick once and kind of show you what I'm talking about for those people that are maybe trying to get into this. If I turn the pick and start using sort of the fat part of this guitar pick, notice yes. the difference in sound. So even if I was able to pick fast, you don't hear any percussion. Right. Where if I turn it back... Oh, yeah. You're done. You hear that clicking, you hear that percussion where you're, you're snapping the string with the guitar pick as you play. So the first thing is, is just trying to figure out where you're going to make your movement from, whether it's going to be from your elbow or whether it's going to be from your wrist. Have you ever Steve, actually you, thought about that, Tim? No, I never have until this very moment. And I guess I do it from the wrist. Sure. But do you have an opinion about either or? No, I think for me, honestly, it kind of changes. As I start going really, really fast, it actually just sort of becomes more from the elbow and it's just a movement of the wrist like this, almost like you're kind of dripping water off your hand. You're just, so it isn't like this as much as it is just a little turn like this. 
Well, maybe that's important because I I, I want to get better at this. And maybe it's better for me to engage my elbow a little bit. And then you, you just, you say the wrist is engaged a little also. Yeah, it's yeah, a, yeah. A so combination. It, that's right. So I'm trying to put my wrist here. So if you can look at it, instead of thinking of it as shaking somebody's hand like this, you're, you're doing a twist like this. The, the first step is just, it, we can practice what's called tremolo picking, which is just trying to pick a string and a, a note, you know. And ultimately, that's right. And ultimately what we're trying to do is just, you know, if you think about movement here, we're just trying to get from point A to point B, which is really literally above and below the string, and that's all. Turns out Steve and I hold the pick in almost exactly the same way. When I practice this alone in front of the TV, I'm gonna try and keep this relaxed. I'm gonna try and make the smallest movements possible, you know, just shrink, shrink, shrink until I'm doing the most minimal up and down and still striking the string. Try, try and make it more relaxed, get faster at it. And, I, and then I think what I'm gonna try and do, just to break it up, I'm gonna try and walk up like a D major scale. Because in a way, it's really hard for me just to stay here. That's what's good about it. And I'm going to try and do some octaves. Get my aim better. The second part of this is, is once you start developing that, what I want you to start thinking about is the angle at which you're hitting the string. Now, okay. you might turn the, 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 like some people play with their pick forward like this a little bit, right? Yeah, So right. if you think about it, if the string is sitting like this and the pick is sitting flat, okay, it's gonna get the most friction possible. Now it's possible to turn that pick just a little bit forward. I don't turn backward, I turn forward just a teeny bit, which allows the pick to slice through the string a little bit more, creating a little bit less friction. I like that, I think I do that naturally too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a slight angle, so it's not totally flat, Right. Uh, parallel, it's just slightly turned. Slight angle. That's Forward. right. That's right. Because if you turn it too much, then the problem is, is that you wind up getting that weird slicing sound again. You're not getting any percussion if you turn it too much. And it's a challenge for me just to do the minimal amount of movement because I tend, if I exaggerate, you know, I'm kind of, if you, if you put a microscope on what I'm doing, it would look this big and I need to like, I need to shrink the range to where it's really small. Right. And that really is the beginning part of this whole thing is, is before we start worrying about, because I, I teach students this stuff all the time, and everybody wants to start getting in there and start playing scales and everything, which is great. But the first thing you have to do is just develop intuition before you ever start working with a metronome or anything like that, is just getting your body to understand what it is that you're trying to do with that minimal movement. The, the, the last part of this that we're talking about right now that I would highly recommend to you is when you watch players that play really fast, like you just said, it looks pretty effortless. And so yeah. if we think about it, what we're trying to do is use less energy. So if we think about from the neck on down, all the way down your arm, you're trying to create, you're trying to relieve tension, I should say. So as you're okay. playing, you know, don't get in there and start doing this sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> you can grit your teeth, but th that's, that's the thing. It's hard to be aggressive and be light at the same time. It's a paradox. It's like, I got to see Eddie Van Halen rehearse once. Dweezil took me to a Van Halen rehearsal once. And it was amazing, this massive amount of aggression that, that came from, literally, he was picking as light as a butterfly. Right. So I, I, think my, I think to start out with, I'd have to relax my whole thing and be very gentle. I can already feel an improvement. However, I do notice myself That's right. tensing up in here. And what you're saying is don't even do that. No, and that's that's the beauty of what we just what you had mentioned about sitting in front of the TV is before you start confining yourself into a scale and you know metronome and all these things is you're just trying to figure out how this feels. Oh yeah, yeah. Just okay. to develop that feel, right? You're just and then you can start focusing then on your dynamic. Is your down pick and your up pick 
compatible with each other? Or is one of them striking harder than the other one? Oh, you start that's trying good. to balance that out a little bit. Well, okay, so that leads us to two more things. I don't want to overwhelm you, but there's, <laughs> there's two other things to think about. So if you think about it, when you go to pick that string, you're going to be picking the string somewhere along this sort of half circular dimension, right? You're either on, on the front of the string or some players will kind of play to the side of the string down here. And it's okay, right. it doesn't matter. The, the point is, is you got to figure out where that is though to make sure that you're hitting both sides at the proper angle. And then the last thing I'll say about that is, uh, you also want to think about the direction that the actual pick is, right? Because we always think again, ideally the string would be here and the pick would be uh, perpendicular to that but you may actually have the, the pick turn just a little bit. So when I play this, I'm actually kind of jutting my, my thumb backwards just a little bit like this, as opposed to forward like this. I'm coming back just a little bit. And I'm kind of picking on the top side of the string, if that makes sense. So that's where I, that's my sweet spot. What you're trying to work on is going to then expand itself to connecting to adjacent strings. I'll just go down here on the fifth fret I'm okay. Play five, seven, and eight. So what I uh, what I'm got to do here, the the first step is getting from the sixth string to the fifth string, right? So I've got to really focus on the fact that I'm starting with a down, and I'm ending with an up. Okay. Just curious, are you palm muting just a little bit? I am, yeah. Usually when I'm in the thicker strings, I tend to do more palm muting. And, and that's something we should talk about for one second. It's actually a, a good habit on the lower strings with distortion to palm mute a little bit because they get a little too woofy and fuzzy if you don't. That's so it's right. just a natural thing we do. That's right. Okay. Okay, now before we move on, you may notice that as you're trying to practice this, because now what we've done is we've moved from trying to just freeform tremolo pick to systematically trying to synchronize both hands. So you now need to be aware of whether or not this hand, and this is another subject for another time, Tim, obviously, but you need to be aware of whether or not this hand needs any work. Like right now we're playing first, third, and pinky. A lot of people have a hard time with their third and pinky. So right. as you're trying to synchronize this, you might find that you are develop, you've developed some other issues that you need to work with in this hand before these two are really gonna become friends and start working together. Oh, that's good to know. And I can see that I do have a little bit of an issue. Part of the reason I can't go as fast as I want is because it's not completely smooth, the transition between these three fingers here. Right. I can feel that there's a little bit of a lumpiness <laughs> happening. <laughs> and just, it's funny, just the awareness of something makes you better at it. That's right. Just the awareness that, oh, I'm ignoring a little problem here. And, and if I focus my attention on that problem, immediately improve. That's right. Like I couldn't do that that well four minutes ago. Right. And it's just, it's just what you said about ignoring another issue with the left hand. So that's right. And that's, that's Very the whole thing is, is always understanding that once you can reveal an issue, like what we're talking about right now, all it, all it takes then is your time and your focus. You know, it's not just yeah. practice. It's really concentrating as your practice. Be in the moment. Really think about what you're trying to do so your time is better well served. So this is something I hadn't really thought about in a long time. So if I'm mad at my right hand because it's not fast enough, maybe I should look over at the left hand and be mad at the left hand because it's not really keeping up. And it's true that if I can do this really smoothly... <laughs> It's the left hand that's slowing me down on that. So what I know, what a great uh, simple exercise. And I noticed, first of all, it's a little easier to do three of them in a row. I noticed there was a little issue with continuity between these three fingers. And that's something I can work on too. Let's put four in. Wow, that's a really good exercise. That's one thing that I've learned in my older age is that instead of trying to you know, bombard myself with information, I just try and find one thing that can change myself, my playing, to make me feel better. And 
make me sound better, hopefully. And I just focus on that for two weeks or a month or two months, you know what I mean? Just trying to develop that thing so I never have to worry about it going away again. It, it really does become part of what I do. Let's come up to the upper strings if you would. And, and this will go back to the video that I saw that you did on this that was so great. How do I play that phrase better than I'm playing it now? Do I slow it down and make sure everything is even? And then get a metronome and yes. do it a little faster, a little faster. Go. Is that that the way? That's okay. right. Once once intuition is kicked in and you've started developing some sort of automation with what you're trying to do, then that's when the metronome should come in. And you just sit and practice it over and over and over. And I often, again, this is something I found in the last 10 years of my, 15 years of my playing, is that oftentimes it's nice to have just a generic pre-practice when you first grab the guitar. Most people don't grab the guitar and feel great. It takes them a few minutes to get things flowing and oh, find their space. Yeah. So that's when, you know, yeah. in that, which I call a pre-practice, that's a great time to just start trying to get everybody warmed up, get your body synchronized, your brain in there. Then once you've gotten kind of that first 20, 30 minutes or 15, 20 minutes or whatever out of the way, that's when you grab the metronome and you just start practicing this thing over and over and over. But now you're, you're very aware of all of these things that we've talked about, you know, your timing, um, your accenting, you know, is there, is there anything that's stronger or weaker than something else? And, uh, and strength, you know, finger strength, make sure that this is synchronizing. Cause even if this hand can go faster, you're still at the mercy of this hand. They, they have to find a, a, a happy medium to be able to make this work. And if that means, you know, you really want to go faster, well then doing some strength exercises with this hand is going to help you get to that next level as well. I remember when I was on tour and I had the time, I would eat dinner and then I would spend the next two hours warming up so that when I went on stage, uh, everything would go a lot better. When I sit down, I'm often a little stiff and I don't have quite the ability that I really have a half hour later. And I judge myself and I get really hard on myself for that. So that's something not to do. I mean, certainly the first 30 minutes of your guitar playing, it's kind of a warm up. That's right. And I can even feel it that's a right. difference between now and when we started a few minutes ago. So that's a really good point. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to practice and I'm going to try and keep it perfect and keep all the good habits in place. No tensing, doing everything very even, keeping the pick angle the way I want it, making sure that the up and down are dead even. And that's a big one. Trying to make sure everything is as good as I can get it and then increase the tempo slightly. That's right. Yep. And that then, the way? Yep. And like I said, once once all of that is kind of where where you don't have to concentrate on any one element, you can kind of bird's eye view the whole thing and you can see it happening and you can feel it happening. That's when you want to bring the metronome in because then you can start concentrating on the metronome because you're not having to concentrate on these other things. Okay, so and I had forgotten one thing is that elbow thing. That's the thing I really want to pay attention to is the benefits of maybe bringing the elbow in rather than just using the wrist. That might be one of the reasons that I'm not playing as fast as I want to is because I'm, I'm just using the wrist. And if I bring the elbow in, maybe I'll get faster. Yep, and you'll find that. You, you'll become aware of that if you just practice that tremolo picking thing too. You know, at different speeds, you might start realizing that there's a shift between your wrist and your elbow as you start increasing speed. Dude, man, you're uh, you're so good. Thank you so much for this. That's awesome. Thank you, Tim. It's it's been fun. Let's do it again very very soon. We sure will. Thanks, everybody. Right, Take care.